Building a Lego city can be a daunting task, but in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can make the planning process easier by building out a virtual blueprint of your Lego city layout before we even start building. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is a super easy way to visualize the optimal LEGO City layout to utilize the space you have available without wasting a bunch of time moving stuff around in real life. Right now, I've got a ton of new buildings to add to my LEGO City as well as a train, which is my first ever LEGO train. My LEGO City table is uh, decently sized, but I knew that adding a train layout to the table was gonna require not only some careful planning, but a complete reorganization of how we've laid out the city. So there's a lot of ways that you can plan out a blueprint for your city. You can use a simple pen and paper, obviously, which I have actually done before. That's probably the easiest option for a rough layout, but if you want it to be super accurate, you would need to do a lot of measuring. But if you're watching this video, you may be interested in how you can do something similar on your computer. For digital options, you could use something as simple as Microsoft Paint. That sounds like a bit of a headache to me. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to the world of vector graphics, and I'm gonna tell you how vector graphics can help you plan out your Lego city. So the two best things about vector graphics programs are that they are layer-based, non-destructive, and a very precise editing environment. So you can rearrange your city as many times as you want with just the click of a few buttons. Vector-based programs allow you to set measurements accurately, so you can plan your LEGO city precisely with ease. This may seem a bit intimidating if none of you have ever worked with a program like this before, but you can download a free template file that I made for you guys featuring road plates, base plates, and train tracks that you can download set your table size, and then get to work with arranging your city. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this tutorial. Any vector graphic editing program will work, but the program that I'm gonna be using in this video is called Inkscape. Inkscape is free to download. So step one is to go to Inkscape's website, which I've linked down below, and download the software, install it, and open it up. And at this point, you might as well also download the uh, template file that I've created so let me go ahead, get on the computer, and we'll go ahead and walk through exactly how to make a virtual LEGO City blueprint. So once we do have Inkscape installed, let's go ahead and run this sucker. It should open up a little window um, for quick setup. I personally prefer Adobe Illustrator keyboard controls. Um, that is not a big deal. If you're gonna do this by yourself from scratch, you could go ahead and click new document right here. But what we're gonna do is actually browse for other files because we wanna go ahead and open up the template file that I have made available. So we're gonna go ahead and go to Lego City Planning Template. We're gonna go ahead and open that thing up. So once you do open up this template, Lego City Planning Template file, edition one made by Michael, that is me from New Brickerton. So it says, use the elements below to assemble your city layout or make your own. So you'll see we do have these elements below. What are these elements? We have base plates, half base plates, road plates old and road plates new, that's right. I have, even though I use the new road plates, I did actually painstakingly design these based on pictures of the actual road plates. It actually wasn't too hard, but I am proud of those. I was not gonna make the uh, curved dash lines on that one. That is uh, just a pain. And then we also have train tracks. I know there are additional uh, train track layouts, but I focused on curves and straights. So the basis of working in Inkscape there's only going to be a few tools that we actually need to use and when i say tools i mean these buttons over here on the left and the right so there are tons of tutorials out there on how you can uh, learn how to use inkscape learn how to use programs like this but in this video i'm only going to talk about the relevant actions to what we're doing right here up here in the left this is our selection tool there are keyboard shortcuts for these as well i'll try to click them so you at least know where they are but you can learn shortcuts so if i press s that's going to let me select and transform objects so when we're talking about selecting and transforming objects these objects here are things that you can grab so if you grab it with a left click you can move it around and rearrange it you can press edit undo or press this arrow over here, or press Control Z to undo, put it back where it was. That is super helpful. I undo stuff all the time. And when you're testing out different things in your LEGO City layout, it is cool to be able to undo. But if you see this little control up here, this is the snapping tool. So you wanna have snapping turned on. You wanna have that button pressed. So if I move this base plate up here, snap onto this one. Hang on, let me move this over. 
it should snap. See, it just snapped like that. And I do have an outline on the base plates, so when you do put them together, there will be a border. Um, that is something you can turn off, but I just like that because it can, creates kind of like a grid that you can follow. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo those last three things that I did. Smarter way to maneuver and manipulate these elements here is you're just gonna click on it. You can either press copy or you can press control C. Point your mouse to where you want to go and then just press uh, right click, paste, or control V. And that's going to allow you to quickly create a bunch of land. You know, you can go ahead and paste over and over again. Um, so you can actually work pretty quickly if you get good at, uh, you know, the controls of the program. So that is how you move things around. Um, if you want to make a longer road, for example, you can add two road pieces together, then you duplicate those two roads, and then you uh, grab them all, duplicate all those roads. So there's a lot of ways to uh, quickly build out a city. So um, you'll see that one other thing I wanna show you is you'll see I have a few example buildings here. This is just an example of a daily bugle that I did, a police station, and a bookshop, uh, the modular buildings. One more thing that I'll show you before we actually get into the uh, building of the layout. So these are pretty properly proportioned, and what do I mean by that? So if you click on an object, such as one of these base plates. You'll see up here in the top, we've got X and Y, that's its location, but we also have W and H. And actually, we wanna go ahead and go to, these are your units, obviously. So not, right now it's in pixels, but I wanna be in inches because I am in uh, a Marabrained Patriot. Uh, you'll see it's 10 by 10 inches. So that is the actual, um, size of a Lego base plate. So all of this, I have gone and proportioned it properly. So it is, it's real life proportions with each other. So you'll see if I click on centimeters, 25.4 centimeters, I think that's accurate to real life. It's either accurate or pretty close. Um, same deal, these are 10 by five. The road plates are five by five, or at least they should be. So let me just show you really quickly how you can put together your own building. So you can copy one of these base plates. Let's say you have your own uh, building that you've designed. So let's go ahead and copy this base plate. I'm going to hit control C or right click copy. I'm going to paste over here. And let's say that I do want to make this daily bugle up here. So you can do this precisely or you can just eyeball it, which is what I did. But what you want to do is go ahead and come up to the rectangle. You can make a new rectangle. And one thing that is also really cool is if you press I or this eyedropper tool. So this is gonna pick the color of whatever you click on. So if I make a new rectangle and I want it to be this color, I can press I, I can click on that, and then it's gonna make it that color. So I did just eyeball this, but once you have your new square made, you can, uh, you know, maybe you wanna do a seven uh, inch by four inch building. That could be like the ice cream shop that I did. In addition to directly typing in the numbers, um, you can, you know, just scale these objects yourself by clicking on them. And you'll see these have these transform controls around the outside. So if I grab this, it's going to let me to expand it and make it any shape that I want. Um, if you hold control, it will scale proportionally, which is helpful if you want to just keep a square but make it bigger. And... If you hold shift, it uh, scales from the center rather than scaling from the corners. But once you do get your building set up, you can label it if you want by clicking over here on the text button. We're gonna do bigger text. We're gonna do like 144, see how big that is. And we're gonna type here and we can say ice cream shop. And you can see that's actually still really small because if you imagine how big like 12 point font is and this is like a 10, a uh, 10 inch base plate, you can imagine that it would be pretty small. We're gonna select it and you can see there's our arrows here. So we can scale that up. And then what you wanna do is hold control while you're scaling that guy up, just so he maintains his size. I don't know why it's freaking out like that. I am new to Inkscape guys. Like I said, I have used Illustrator before, but this is a little weird. And then we can change the color down here to black. And all I did to change the color was just click down here in this color bar. And then we can scale it down. And it's not pretty, it's not the best, but now we have our own custom building. So you can do this as many times as you want for as many buildings as you need. And then once you have it put together, what you wanna do, grab your selection tool, 
drag, click and drag. So you can see how it's doing a uh, box there. Click and drag around a box, and then you can right click. And what you want to do is press group, or you can press control G. The reason you want to do this is now when you grab these three elements, they will all move around together. What you would have had to do if you didn't group it is you would have to click the box in the background, hold shift, click the smaller box, hold shift, click the text, and that's how you select more than one thing at a time. Let's go ahead and regroup this guy. And now what we're gonna do is zoom out, and there is a zoom tool. You can click the magnifying glass down here. You can also use this minus and plus sign down here. It's getting kind of covered up by the mouse uh, thing, but you can see right here is where you can do plus and minus to zoom in and out. We're now at 9.3% zoom. So if you come back out here to our original view and scroll down, what you'll see here is the Lego table section. And what this is, is this is where you can actually enter in your own dimensions that you would like to design a Lego table to. So you'll see in inches, it's about 115 inches by 56 inches by default, but let's say, um, what's a normal table size? We'll do, uh, I'll do a small one. Let's do um, 30 by 60. So it's not the biggest table size, but it's enough for us to build on. Okay, and so you can kind of do the math here. So 10, 10 inches of base plate, we can probably fit six base plates wide by three base plates tall. So let's go ahead and start building it out. Let's say you are like me and you want to have an ocean on one side. So we're just going to go ahead and click and drag. And all I did is uh, copy and paste those blue squares, guys, because all I'm literally doing is copy and pasting these blue squares. And then maybe we want to have a beach I want to have a beach here. We'll have two separate beach squares. And then we want to go ahead and maybe this layout won't make sense. But let's go ahead and grab these road plate layouts. And let's say, guys, that you are one of the people who has done some of those awesome Mills Plate roads where you take the new Lego road plates and you build your own sidewalks. Let's say that's your setup. We can go ahead and put two of these road plates on here. And I'll probably go ahead and just include this in the tutorial for you guys so you have it. Or I'll include it in the template file. Another thing you can do is use arrow keys to nudge things just a little bit. That's what I'm doing right now. So now we've got these guys on here. And let's go ahead and make our roads. So this is a situation where I want to know how to rotate this road. So what we're going to do up here on this toolbar, when we have this selected, you'll see we have the 90 degree rotate button. You should only really need 90 degree rotate in this. Um, but you know, I won't, I won't build out this whole layout for you guys, but you can kind of see how this goes. And uh, if you guys watched my recent live stream, you know that I actually did use this technique to plan out uh, my new city. So this is kind of a small, this is a bit of a small layout for a Lego train. Uh, you couldn't really fit an actual train track on this unless, well, I guess you actually could. So I just copied and pasted that track. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, yeah, you totally could. You totally could, right? So then you just make a rectangular track. So this is how you would uh, use the Lego train track feature. Um, it should be pretty accurate. I'm not sure if the train tracks are 100% accurate in their dimensions. Um, I think it may be slightly, just slightly off, but you can see I do have it in here for reference. These are some Lego curves that I copied from a guide that I found online. And these ones are definitely accurate, at least in the curve of the train. So you can kind of use those to uh, check your work. So one thing that I've run into in building out my own city is some of my buildings are not Lego modular, so they have an open back. And one thing about me is I do not want my open backs to be seen when you're viewing the city, because for obvious reasons, it's just a little weird and uh, very unnatural. So one thing that I did when building out my Lego city layout is I, uh, took those buildings in which I wanted to not show the backs. Let's say it's a gray building and they were an abnormal size. I don't remember exactly what, but let's say they were like, 
you know, five, eh. We're just gonna make an arbitrary size. We're just gonna make an arbitrary size. So, one thing that I would do, in the side in which I didn't want to be showing, I would draw it in red. So I would just add on this red section here. You can make it big or you can make it small. Um, I just want it to be on that side so you can kind of see. And then you can put a building, let's say we want to call it the post office. So we're gonna call it the post office. We're going to group that guy. We're going to, let's just duplicate it. Pretend we have, these wouldn't all be a post office, but what I'm just trying to illustrate is how you can, you know, use these as a way to, let's say theoretically, you had other buildings, you can make a line of buildings here. It's just showing, hey, I need to be cognizant of this edge, because this edge does not look very good. And I thought that was a smart way to do it. I want to show you how you can make custom shapes. So I've only really shown you how to use squares and rectangles, but you can do all sorts of stuff. You can use make a circle if you want to if you have I don't know what there is in Lego that's a circle but you know there's stars there are octagons all sorts of stuff I won't dive too deeply into that but I do want to show you how you can make multiple shapes and combine them together so in my city I wanted to do a one and a half base plate uh, build uh, for my Hogwarts castle so I'm gonna use tan base plates for that and I want to have a one and a half base plate build so I have these right next to each other and honestly this was good enough for me but if you do want to combine these two together let's say you're making it into a mills plate you can go ahead and select both of these you can select them both go up into path and then we can press union which is gonna make them into one particular thing you can use this for many purposes let's just imagine that i wanted to make some sort of like weirdly shaped thing it could be a sidewalk it could be anything but if you put these shapes together you select multiple shapes and then you go up to path union they will combine and now they're all one piece you can also do all sorts of fun stuff with this path feature you can do exclusion which is gonna mess around with that i won't get too much into that um this is getting really deep into how you use a vector editing program but if you guys like this, let me know because I would be happy to show you guys more on how you can use Inkscape for this. Please let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that this process was super helpful for my own LEGO City planning. I wanted to see if anyone else could benefit from this information as well. So let me know down below in the comments whether or not you're able to glean some sort of information from this video and if you have any questions or trouble with the template file or with Inkscape. As always, I love to see the creations that you guys make after watching my videos. So feel free to hit me up on Instagram or Twitter at New Brickerton. I've also finally created a Discord channel with the help of some of my moderators. I'm gonna be doing a gradual rollout of that since I haven't really ever managed a Discord server before, but if you are watching this now, this is your chance to get into the Discord early and give me feedback on it. So the link for that is also down below in the description. I think that's about it for this video, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all of you at New Brickerton fans, and I will catch you in the next one. Happy building, my friends. Peace out.